Hey PA junkies, how's it going? I am so glad to have you here in my little nook of the interwebs. My name is Kat and I talk all things my native state, Pennsylvania, also known as PA. I'm just gonna say this every time for anybody who's new here because honestly on PA Junkie, I have people from all over the globe tuning in to my content. It's crazy. I've had people say they're from Ireland and they're moving to Pennsylvania for work and this account helps them learn about PA and I just think that's so incredibly cool. So that's why I preface all of these videos with this. And yeah, that's pretty much it. All that said, if you like learning about our Commonwealth, all of the fun, creepy, healing, exciting, adventurous things, then you've come to the right place. Welcome in. And before I get started, just a little housekeeping, be sure to hit that subscribe button to be notified for future videos that air here on my channel every Wednesday. Before I get into today's very special creepy PA story, which you're going to love, I wanna remind you guys that in the description of all of these videos is a Google form where you can submit your creepy PA stories. Maybe it's something paranormal based, maybe it's a true crime story that happened in Pennsylvania that's personal to you perhaps. Whatever that may be, go ahead, click the link to that form in the description of this video and submit as many as you'd like because the more stories you submit, the more content we have here on YouTube. Yay! So let's waste no more time and get into today's creepy PA story that was submitted by my cousin of all people who I absolutely adore, Mary Kate, shout out, we love you. This did not happen in Pennsylvania, it happened in Maryland, but it happened at a place that's 15 minutes from Gettysburg. So my cousin and I both agreed this was fair game for PA Junkie YouTube and it is so worth it. You are going to crap your pants when you hear her story, so. Get ready. I am very much still recovering from this, so here we go. I went to Mount St. Mary's for undergrad, which is like 15 minutes from Gettysburg. As a freshman, I stayed in one of the original buildings that was converted into dorms. Literally still had straw insulation in some parts of the building. Anywho, me and my roommates always would hear loud writing or scribbling sounds on the desk at odd hours, doorknobs that would turn seemingly on their own, chatter when the hall was empty, and alarm clocks that would go back and forth in time right in front of our eyes. After Thanksgiving break the first year, I decided to return to campus early. Only the swim team and seminarians had remained on campus, so my entire hall was empty, except for my roommate, a swimmer, who was at a dinner with the rest of the swim team. I unpacked and decided to take a shower. I was doing my thing when I felt a tugging on my hair. I assumed my hair was stuck on the wall or something, so initially I ignored it, but it continued. So I kept turning around to see that it wasn't snagged on anything. I started getting freaked out after a few tugs, so decided to cut the shower short and go meet up with my roommate at the dining hall. Well, when I get out, I see tiny wet footprints leading out of the bathroom and disappearing down our hall. I have never moved so quickly in my entire life. And get this, the campus held one of their regular ghost tours a few weeks later. Turns out there was a young girl known as the Knott Girl, who was the daughter of one of the former professors, Professor Knott. She died young, I think of TB, but apparently loved to run around the campus being silly and visiting with her father's colleagues. They said she wasn't malicious, but simply remained on campus trying to make friends. I don't... <laughs> oh, when I first read this, I was shooketh. Something about kids also passing on into the afterlife and coming back, it just... It hits me so differently. I don't know about you, but it just freaks me out even more. And for the record, as per my research, Mount St. Mary's is indeed a very haunted institution with many stories like that of my cousin Mary Kate's. Did you know for starters, Mount St. Mary's was founded in 1808, many, many, many moons ago, and is the second largest Catholic institution in the country? I didn't know that. I pulled most of what I'm about to share with you guys from this Washington Post article, and it was fascinating. The stories are so unsettling in some cases, so sad, just really, really, really spooky. And this school is so haunted that even the campus historian, Reverend Dan Nussbaum, I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, said that he absolutely believes in the poltergeist because it's something he saw there. What? Now, according to this Washington Post article, there is a room in one of the buildings on campus, room 252, that is notoriously known by so many people as being one of the most paranormally active rooms. Back in the 70s, there was a priest living in room 252, and one day after he finished redding up his room, he decided to walk out 
for a few minutes. And when he came back into his room, he found all of his belongings scattered all over the place. Books, furniture, papers, his pajamas, everything. And he was in complete shock. He also reported that his TV would go on and off at random times of the day without any explanation as to why, which really freaked him out. And at one point he was basically like, I'm out. So after this priest in the 70s moved out of room 252, understandably so, there was another one who moved in and he would find that his cat would go under his bed and hiss at random moments of the day at nothing, nothing, right? Super weird. And these experiences basically left room 252 vacant for many years to come until the 1990s. In 1997, a group of students moved in to room 252. And just because time had passed does not mean that the spirits exited the room. Spirits do not discriminate. And this group of students back in the 90s said that their mirror fell right off the wall and the toilet would flush at random. So what exactly is so alluring about room 252 when it comes to spiritual activity? Well, it just so happens that one of the school's former presidents, Reverend Simon Brut, who died in 1839, again, long, long time ago, is often seen walking around on campus in a long black robe. And he really fancies room 252. With all of this in mind, it makes sense that the building room 252 is in is called Brute Hall, named after the Reverend himself. You would think in 1997, people have had enough of this and they would just completely close down room 252. But in 2001, there were more experiences in this room. A former student of Mount St. Mary's moved into room 252 in 2001 and he said he was watching TV at one point and the channels would just jump back and forth from channel to channel at random. He also had a bookshelf in his room and unbeknownst to him, the bookshelf was placed in the same exact location that Reverend Simon Brute reportedly died on. So it makes all the sense that in the middle of the night, glasses would just fly off this kid's bookshelf. I, I would not be sleeping. If you guys have been hanging with me long enough, you know I am very into the spiritual, the paranormal, the afterlife, all the things. A lot of spiritual entities will use their force to physically move things in this earthly lifetime, just to make their presence known. And it's not so much scary in a lot of cases, more than it is sad. One of my friends lives in Massachusetts and she can physically see spirits, apparitions. She can physically see them. She sees her grandfather who passed away. She also sees a lot of civil war vets in her hallway. And these are just like, we have these conversations all the time and people, most definitely think we're probably crazy. She talks about how exhausting it can be just to be around the energy, but also the fact that it's really sad because a lot of these spirits who have passed on don't realize they're dead. They think they're still alive. They're just trapped in this purgatory of sorts. So when I think about it that way, it's really, really sad. Of course, that doesn't diminish or take away the fact that it is completely insane to wake up to glasses falling off of a bookshelf in the middle of the night. So clearly room 252 in Brood Hall is riddled with spiritual activity, but there's a building next to Brood Hall called McCaffrey Hall, where people have reported incidents as well. Back in the 1800s, there was a slave on campus named Leander, and Leander lived in McCaffrey Hall on the first floor. At one point in his time working on the campus, he was accused of stealing, and instead of just addressing it, they decided to cut off his hand completely. Ironic coming from such a religious institution, but we won't get into that conversation today. <laughs> That's a different video for another time. So they cut off his hand, which is completely traumatizing. I can't even imagine going through that. And they bury it in the quadrangle. Again, quite the holy institution. <laughs> Later on, Leander was set free which meant he was able to stay on campus, which to me is more of a death sentence than anything given what he went through. When he eventually passed away, they buried him in the school cemetery. Fast forward to present day, where a lot of students have reported seeing a ghostly severed hand on campus. In some cases, hearing fingers scratching on dorm windows without an actual hand being there. Super creepy. And a lot of these students and faculty believe this is Leander's hand 
trying to find his body to reconnect it to his body, which is so sad. You know what? If I ever go to Mount St. Mary's just for a visit, which honestly I'm inclined to at this point, I will make sure that I bring flowers for Leander or at least just go to his grave and give him some love because I just feel so sad about his story. This one is giving Romeo and Juliet through and through because of the tragic energy behind it. It's just, it's really sad. Once again, I don't really have anything happy to share with you here. This one is about one of Mount St. Mary's most famous ghosts. He used to be a soldier in the Civil War, and at that time, he was with a woman. And they made a pact together that they would look at the stars at night, and they would think of each other when he was away at war. Really sweet. Honestly, chivalry wasn't dead then. Here's where the PA connection comes in. And of course, it's not a happy ending, but this soldier died in Gettysburg and he was buried face down in an old well. Allegedly, people on campus have felt the spirit of this soldier tap their shoulders and ask them to turn him over so that he can finally look up at the stars to communicate with his love. I can't. Needless to say, I wish I had happier, more joyful things to share with you in this video, because honestly, it feels like these are all lost souls and they're trying to reconnect with the life they once had. It's just really, really sad. Mount St. Mary's is popping with spiritual activity, which makes me very inclined to go visit because I would be that person. Absolutely crazy. If you've been to Mount St. Mary's and you've witnessed paranormal activity, let us know in the comments because I love reading your stories. As sad as a lot of these stories are, I still find them to be very fascinating. And trust me, the buck doesn't stop here because you guys have submitted so many creepy stories. Again, the link is in the description of this video if you wanna submit yours and uh, just get ready because they're they're pretty wild. And just remember on that form, you do not have to share your name. You don't have to share your location. It's there as an option if you choose to. I mean, come on, we love a little mystery every now and then. All that said, you guys, that is it for today's video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be notified for future videos that air here on my channel every Wednesday. As always, I'm sending all the healing good energy your way. Much love and light, and I'll see you next time.